So, hi everyone. I'm just fortunate tonight to have the attention of Doug Smith and his wife Jack, who's visiting with us. And uh, Doug's a, a cartoonist that I've been seeing his cartoon every single week for a couple of years now in yep. the Easton paper. But I didn't know until an hour ago that Doug's doing a different cartoon for each of the papers, and there's 14 papers, I think. There are 12 papers, actually. 12? And they used to call it Hersha Macon, Doug, and now they call it... Just the Han Network. H-A-N. Yeah, H-A-N Han. Network. But I never knew that you had to do 14... You have to do something that sort of fits in with that town? Right, right. Just, uh, you know, read the stories, find out what's going on, and uh, sometimes I can get away using a generic cartoon for, like, multiple papers, which is what I did during the holidays. I could just recycle an old Christmas cartoon and just give it to everybody and then duck out of work early. Right. But otherwise you have to do it specific... To yeah. To like what's happening in East. Right. Talk with is... each editor and uh, figure out what's going on in the town and try to make a joke about it and <laughs> without offending somebody. Yeah, but <laughs> and not an easy thing to do, right? No. Everything with the politically correct. Well, you could talk to me once if you get stuck because I am pretty much involved in some. I'm on a f few bo boards, you know, okay. the Arts Council board. I'm on the Citizens for Easton. That's an environmental group, and okay, I have been sure. for 20 years plus, maybe 25. And hopefully you won't incur the wrath that I get when I well, accept the telling, leadership. Well, so. I'm not telling anyone <laughs> that I'm the source, you know. As I say, I always get fan mail tied to a brick and thrown through the window. Oh, but, uh, is that they do? <laughs> well, no, you, a lot of folks like the cartoons, so it's it's fun that it's way. Pretty it's, re big, it's rewarding. It's a pretty big part of that page that you do. Yeah. That's the cartoon. They give it quite a bit of space. Yeah, uh, right so, there in the op-ed page. Yeah. So here's the question I had is what, you know, I was kind of picturing you from that caricature mm -hmm. that they have of you, but you're much better looking than oh, that. Oh, thank and you. And so I, <laughs> I mean it. So, well, wait, wait till I take off my cap here and then. Uh, well, you know, I'm not worrying about see I can my see ugly how head, yeah. healthy you are. So <laughs> I, I was thinking, what brings you to doing that political tongue in cheek cartoon that's supposed to be funny every week because I'm sure it's not always easy because some weeks you might not have something in mind that's right. funny. Well, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be an editorial cartoon. I mean, I can do a political cartoon. I can do a public service cartoon. I can do something that's happening in town like, a, you know, like a downtown sale, um, something maybe a football team has won a game. I can highlight that. You know, just anything to do with the Do you the have town. to have it approved by your editor? Um, you know, I do have carte blanche to some degree. It's taken me a long time to get to that point. Really? I used to have to run, run everything by the publisher and the editor to make sure that somebody wouldn't get offended or we wouldn't get sued, that it wasn't slanderous or libelous. Uh, but most of the time, you know, I, you know, it's 30 years of doing this. I sort of know right. what the boundaries right. are. And they, they let me, you know, they, they pretty much trust my judgment. So how, how did you end up start to do this? I mean, you tell me you grew up in Wilton. Yeah, well, I mean, as Wilton. a kid, as a kid, I've been drawing cartoons and comics oh. ever since a little kid, and You'll obviously like getting into trouble in grade school, drawing the teachers and things like that. And uh, learned at an early age, you know, you pass the cartoon around. As soon as you get it back, you rip it up in little pieces because otherwise you end up in the principal's office saying, really? like, well, "What is this?" And uh, but you know, then I went to college and I learned uh, fine arts, and then after that, I, I studied graphic design. And I, I started working at, it at the time, was Hometown Publications. I remember. You think and I don't? They, I they were the, the, more of the towns in Upper Fairfield County. And we it was 1991, I guess, Lowell Weicker, the governor, passed through the income tax, which, as you recall, was a big right. taxation is. without representation type thing. People were up in arms. So the publisher came to me and said, like, you know, he had seen me, like, doodling at work, you know, just for the benefit of everyone there. And he's like, can you draw me an editorial cartoon? So the first cartoon I did was uh, a bow of a ship with Lowell Weicker being tossed off by a multitude of people, and it just said the Connecticut Tea Party. <laughs> and uh, there's a little fish in the water just saying, oh, come on, we don't want them either. And <laughs> after that, it was like, this is great. Can you keep doing cartoons for us? And oh, that's how it started. Yeah, so... Um, you were doodling, and somebody saw and you doing now, it. Now, the beauty of it at the time was um, we were owned by a larger corporation in Milwaukee, and so when I did these cartoons, I could submit it as a freelance cartoon and get charged, you know, charged $25, $30 a cartoon. So I started doing, well, you know, let, let me see. I've had you uh, 10 cartoons a week times 30. Right. I submitted, and of course, they right off the bat, they said after the first check, well, maybe you could just do it as part of your job. Oh, you know, so, yeah, because 10 times 30. Right. It, a little bit of cash there. But um, right. but the, the beauty is that it's part of my job now, so they're... You know, it is your job. Exactly. And what, how much fun is that to go in and get paid for doing this? 
Right. So, Except for the times you don't come up with an idea. Yeah, but um, at this, you know, at this point, I have a file of I'd say over three thousand cartoons that, that I can draw from. You know, I could take something from ten years ago. Say, you know, it's the dead of winter. There's nothing going on. I could just find a generic winter cartoon that I can just give to the editor and. There might be somebody out there who might call up and say, hey, I saw this cartoon that no, ran seven years ago. Not likely. And I'll say, okay, here's your no prize. You got me. You know? Right. So what we just did in Easton was I asked Doug to come and do a display, which I think was very successful. And he, he took a seven-foot-high glass case and filled it with cartoons uh, that were frames. And it was very well done because I you. went in. It made me laugh. I mean, I looked <laughs> at it for ten. I read them and mm -hmm. made me laugh, chuckle a little bit. Because I was familiar with a lot of what it meant, because I lived here all this time. Right. And, and also, there were things that I could have told you about the cartoon that you didn't know about <laughs> that would have made you laugh, laugh more. <laughs> um, so then after that, right now, you're preparing, and I haven't seen it yet, but I understand you got you installed it, a whole solo show of... Uh, right, because we've, uh, you know, I've done uh, various shows at different venues, uh, libraries and schools and things, and um, I call it my traveling art show, but... Um, just the, the cabinet had just a small percentage, but I had like dozens more cartoons at home in larger frames, so I was able to like really utilize the conference room at the Eastern oh, Library. Oh, I have to go and see it's it. And a, it's a whole new exhibit. There's like one or two from the cabinet that are hung up in there, but that was just to fill space. So they're bigger, because I have to oh, go yeah. see it tomorrow. In other words, it's in the gallery in the Eastern Library. In the now. conference room. Well, I don't call it that. Being oh, okay. that I curate it. Every locally, that's the gallery. Yeah. I call it the small gallery, okay. and then we have the big room, which is like a meeting room. Yeah, hey, yeah. They, hey, they call that the big gallery. Oh, okay, and that's so far from a gallery with all those <laughs> windows in it. Right. So it's okay for me. I designate that the small gallery. Yeah, and it, I guess it's um next Saturday, two to four. I I'm doing a reception there, so folks can come and look at the cartoons and. Do a little meet and greet. And so are you going to send out a little bit of something to people? Or? Well, I have so far. As a matter of fact, you gave me the name of Kit there. He's who, going to do I, it. I, I did send him the invite a few weeks ago, and he did send it out to the... I talked to him today, and he's going to do it again before okay, Saturday. Okay, great. And I sent it out a uh, company-wide blast for Hunt for HAN Network. Yeah, the and people you work out, with. You know, and to drop flyers in the subway, things like that. You know? Okay, drop them from an airplane. <laughs> exactly. Put them on people's front lawns. Can Jackie do some? Can you somewhere you work? Send, because I mean, we want to get third well, twenty-five. We're, you know, family people. and friends are being notified as yeah, well. Yeah, right. We and if we're lucky, me, you know, we'll probably get three people there. No, so. no, we want to try to get like 20, 25 people. Makes a nice. Yeah, Facebook and Facebook. Twitter. And then, mm -hmm. um, you know, they don't provide any refreshments. You know that? Did you know that? Yes. Well, okay. we're we're bringing. Well, don't, a little don't, you something. don't you don't have to overdo it. People just low key it today. But next you know. Saturday, I'm going to try to stop by. And then let's just hope we don't have what's happened in the last two weeks because uh, people charming don't. weather? Yeah, yeah, people don't know, you know, it's get freezing cold and snowing mm -hmm. and they don't know what to do, not do. But let's just hope I'm hearing it's going to get modulated yeah. up to like 50 degrees later this week. Right, hopefully. So that'll That's be some good. nice balmy weather. You know? So then I understand you're going to come back and do a talk. Right, a presentation We're in the other room there that you're talking about. The big room. Yeah, the big room where I just get up and uh, basically, you know, talk about what I do. I have a. Um, uh, uh, what you might call it, an Excel slideshow on the big screen. I, so are you going to gear that up for adults? Are you looking for no, it's, it's, high school students? Mostly high school to adult because, you know, little kids, they, they get, they like cartoons. They want me to draw them stuff, but they get bored by the editorial aspect of the cartoons. Really? Well, I, I did one up in uh, a couple of years ago. I was at the Ridgefield Young Writers Seminar, and I had three classes of third grade kids. And I tried to talk about it, but I was losing the audience, so right. I just ended up drawing like superheroes and monsters and animals for the kids, which oh, they had more fun with. They the, like it, huh? They like the zombies. Oh, yeah. They like the Superman. Well, then, and, and really funny one was uh, there was a little, you know, I said, I tried to talk about editorial car or political cartoons, and I said, um, you know, well, there, I drew the president for him, and I said, what do we know about the president? And one little boy, all of eight years old, raised his hand and said, he has orange hair. So I'm like, okay, orange hair, right. So he started sketching the president. And another, <laughs> another kid said, he wants to build a wall. I'm like, okay, well, let's draw him on a wall. And they started, everyone, all these little kids, eight and nine years old, started shouting out, draw me a Trump, draw me a Trump. And there was one little boy in the back who didn't really speak up. And I walked back to him afterwards. I'm like, can I draw you something? He's like, I want a Trump. I'm like, of course, I'll draw you one. And he thinks special. He goes, draw him sitting on a toilet. 
And it was I, like, what from the mouth of babes? Right? I mean, <laughs> oh my so, God. But it was a lot of fun, you know. That's So you're available mm-hmm. to come and do this so you can contact the libraries and then. Yeah, I mean. Whether you do it as a uh, as a job, I mean, if they employ you as contract, yeah, or yeah, you it's come a, in? Yeah, you know, they, they, they do honorariums for it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Not much because, you know. Yeah, I know. Honorarium. Everyone doesn't have a lot of money these days, but. Um, you know, they they come in and, you know, I do like an hour talk and I do slideshows and I draw for the audience and well, do a question and answer. It's, it's a lot of fun. What I'm thinking about is um, if you are going to be in Easton, let me see what day you're doing that. Doing oh, that's going to be uh, in, uh, the, near the end of January I'm going to be doing it's that. It's coming right up, though. Okay. It's going to be the 25th okay. at 7 o'clock. And I think that's like a Wednesday or a Thursday. Yes. So Thursday is what it is. Yeah, okay. And so what I'm thinking is maybe somebody should call the Barlow High School and tell them in the that's art class, you idea. know, yeah. because we share that high school sure. with Reading, and the kids are pretty sophisticated, and maybe some, there's there might be always going to be a kid uh, like you, that's what I mean, like you. Yeah, well, you saw earlier tonight we met right. uh, Bob Weber, a great cartoonist, a syndicated cartoonist who drew Moose and Molly, Right. and that was such a thrill for me to sit down and talk to him. I, I mean... See can't imagine i'd be a thrill for some kid to talk to but you know it's but you said that mm-hmm. to him that you were in grade in grade eight or something uh, you were in eighth yeah, grade eight, and he came no, uh, grade second, five, second, second or grade. third grade and he came to my school in wilton and drew for us and obviously he didn't remember me but uh no but it was wonderful that you were influenced by that yeah it was uh it was a real treat like i said you know as a little kid i wasn't i wasn't an athlete so to me these cartoonists were like meeting the ball players right, and celebrities it. it was uh it was exciting to really so talk, you, so talk with them. So it'd be good that you're doing this. So that's why we should reach the high school. Yeah. See if there's any uh, budding them. artists out there. Because uh, you never know. You know, if you can just affect one person, as we all say. Yeah. It's worth it. I had a young girl that used to come to my son when he was in high school. He had a friend, and she was a really good cartoonist. She had no mm-hmm. interest whatsoever in going to college. Mm. But she, and so she did a little cartoon of me. You know, with the thing in my hair, and she had me holding the microphone, and oh, moving. like the ones you see at the uh, like the state fair, at the fairs when people do the big heads and the little bodies. Yes, maybe thing, that's you know? what she was influenced by. I used it for a while. She had me moving fast because you know I used to be able to move fast <laughs> with holding the mic and on my way to the next thing. She had a real gift for it, but um, I don't know what you know if she ever. You have to go to school, like you said. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I mean, I could always draw. But it wasn't until I got to, to school that I learned, you know, the pers- how to really do the anatomy of the body and do it in more perspective and foreshortening and shading and things like that, yeah, which really helped she, out a lot. I don't um, think she had that in her to just I mean, a couple of years. I've always been in awe of the care. I'm not really a caricaturist per se, and I've always been in awe of people who can do that. Like if I draw myself, I just draw, you know, a bald guy with a handlebar mustache. I've seen it. You know, this so. picture. <laughs> The one I told you, I think it doesn't do you justice. I like it, but... Well, if you like it, then that's, you know, fine. That's what it needs to be. So Doug's doing these two things in Easton, and he also has done a lot of these shows in other libraries. Because when I talked to you, you said you were ready to rock. Yeah, I've done, um, did one in uh, Ridgefield. I did uh, the Oranoke Art Guild in Stratford. Um the uh, Is that in the Oranoke Village where the people live? Yes, in the... yeah. Oh, Dave, that's... They, interesting um i hear they have lots of activities there yeah, did one in new canaan um did one in uh, that the milford library um you know I've, I've contacted a lot of schools you know seen if ironically um you know like a lot of schools last year i contacted and really wanted me to come in and talk to like the art classes and the communications classes but as we know the a lot of budgets have been cut by the uh oh, state golly it's just so really this past year the state Held oh, all the towns down, thirty percent. I know it was like a. Real I know we've had some here, job. right? It's supposed to Stratford, and you said you live in Stratford, right? I'm I'm actually going to be at the Stratford Historical Society next month doing a talk. Really, when's that? I uh, I'm not certain of the dates. I have to find out. But I'd like to know. Okay, I'll let you I know. Like definitely. That. I like that whole historical area there, yeah. Stratford mm-hmm. Academy Hill. Is that what we're talking yes, about yeah. up there? Mm-hmm. So, okay. what are you going to talk about? Yeah, I uh, just uh, come in and. Uh, you know, the same thing. They just, uh, as a Stratford resident, you know, they want to have my take on Stratford politics. You know, what's going on in the town hall there. Well, there's a lot going on in so Stratford. Doing, what are you going on? So yeah. you're, you're, you're uh, pigeonholed as a political uh, he is a commentary. Poli- a commentary. Yeah. He so, is. Just well, like I say, I don't really, I'm not a political 
not so much commentary as just try to find the humor in it. Right, right. And I don't really need to, I always say, I don't need to find the humor in politics. They do it themselves. They sure do. All I'm doing is illustrating it. It's a field day today. I know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Which is like they say uh, with, um, you know, I was talking about the, the president of the United States. There's, the, I don't think, not since Nixon had the cartoonist had such a field day drawing somebody. Uh, just, all you have to do is do the swoop of hair and they can just have a lot of fun with it's that. It's a field day for all these people <laughs> do late night. On mm. television, they just have. So in in Connecticut, there's a rich history of, of cartoonists and cartoonists. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. You're in you're in uh, very good company. Right. Yeah. Yes. We talked about that tonight. Yeah. Bob it was, Weber. Uh, oh, there's a, there's an interesting book out that was uh, Bob Weber was showing me tonight about written by the son of uh, I think it was Hal Foster who drew Prince Valiant, and he talks about how there was this enclave in the days of the Mad Men, the early '60s. Of in this field of gray flannel suits, it was just this little bohemian thing of all these cartoonists who lived in the Westport area. Right, right. And it, it's just uh, I remember as a little kid being enamored of it, and wishing, well, I got. Sometimes I think I was born forty years too late, but it was. I I remember meeting a lot of these guys as a kid. So what? Why? Why did they gather in Connecticut? With, uh, well, with their proximity to New York yes, City. Yes, because right. of the train. Because right. a lot of them too. They um. I mean, again, in those days, you could live. A lot cheaper in Connecticut back uh, before the suburbs really boomed. You still can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so well, certainly it, cheaper than it New York. It was the factor about the train and getting the artwork into the city. Right, Meet right. their deadlines. But there's so many of so many. They even of had a museum. It was in Portchester. Portchester, yep. I remember when it they was, had um, a... I thought it was in New Canaan, wasn't it? No, no it was, it was Portchester. Portchester um, Rye, Portchester. Uh, it was um, Dick Byron. Brown's son who really organized it, Chris was it, Brown. Was uh, it like a castle or something? Yeah, it was like yeah, a big weird mansion. And then it moved to Florida and it just didn't pan out. Yeah. It died um, after it moved to Florida for some... Bob, Bob Weber was familiar with what happened, why it demise, but it was a wonderful thing when it was here. Was in Port Chester. And then there was, um, I mean, a real treat when I was a little kid was at Wilton High, where I grew up in Wilton during grade school. At the high school, they had what was called Saul Gundy Day, which is where the colleges would come recruiting. The ROTC would be there, um, and they'd have, like, guest speakers. And in their little, they called the little theater, they'd have about 10 local cartoonists who would all come and draw and talk to the audience. So I used to cut school in 7th and 8th grade and go there and sit and... Right. Watch these guys, and so was, you're very inspired by the a big time, yeah. Just yeah. Since first from the early <laughs> uh, second grade, he's saying. And, right. it can, and and there's you're you're not alone. The gentleman that draws Superman is is not that Dick Giordano. He's not was, that. He's not an old school cartoonist. He no. was influenced and in, uh, right. So he was moved into moved into the field because it influenced him as a child. Right. He actually he actually became uh the publisher I believe of DC Comics at one point. Wow. In the, the 70s. So he's got uh, some administrative skills. Oh, and... yeah. And then Bob Weber has a son who's a cartoonist, because I remember meeting... Yeah, he draws a strip called Skylock Fox, which is like a puzzle page for kids. Yeah, for kids, where they do... I've, I've... Yeah, and, and his, he works on it with his dad, which I always think was kind of neat that you could... They're both cartoonists, and they both have the same name. Right, right. Bob so, Weber. So how did you fall into doing the political cartoons? It's um like I said, you know, they they I was just doing graphic design for the newspaper, you know, doing the layout and the uh, the ads and stuff. An essential, and, essential task. Yeah, and um I would just you know as fun I would just see a employee who I wanted to make fun of and draw a little sketch and pass it around and it got you know like, like in school like he did in school, <laughs> you know. But then the uh, publisher at the time you know saw knew I could draw cartoons and that's when he asked me to do the cartoon for the. Uh, so we talk about Nash. I mean that. Father son thing. Oh, we're talking mm. about. I live next door to Ben and Sally. Ben Gum. Yeah. I used to live next door to me. And okay. he was the overriding editor for the paper, right? Right. He was the publisher and the uh, senior editor. He would oversee everything. I know. He and was he, really something. And he was, he was kind of like, hey, you can do cartoons, you know, see if the editors want any cartoons for their papers. So at that point, I would like to have to go to the editors and say, like, you know, kind of like, well, what do you want me to do? What What's going on? Well, maybe you can do something like this. Now I've, you know, it's I'm in a nice position now where I've come so far that, you know, when a new editor comes to me and says, can you do cartoons for me? I'll say, like, sure, but the one thing I just don't want to tolerate is I have an idea for a cartoon. Here's what I want you to do. Oh, being Just told. give me the just what's happening. I'll illustrate it. And that's not to say they don't have a good idea. It's just I can't really illustrate what's in your head. 
Right. And that's right, just right. my style. Yeah, and it's it's it also fosters your creativity. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you you draw for they have nine newspapers. Well, let me think. Uh, Twelve what? newspapers, I guess. Twelve, 12 newspapers. Yeah, so. Darien, Weston, Reading, Wilton, Monroe, Monroe Easton, Easton, Trumbull, Stratford, Stratford, Shelton, Ridgefield, New Canaan. Everywhere. Yeah. So I thought he was doing one, and I thought that was good. One cartoon every week. He's on deadline. Yeah. But he's doing a dozen. <laughs> yeah. Ma and they they match the what's going so on. You, so you're 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 on the level of a syndicated cartoonist. Basically, yeah. And yeah. Pretty pretty cool. Yeah, I got to churn out something every day, in a sense, if yeah. not more. Do you do any of the other um, uh, stuff that you were doing with uh, layouts and that sort of thing? Oh yeah, that's still my primary job. Is I have to like determine the ad count of oh. ads for the newspaper. Right. You know, I have a proportion of ads and how much editorial copy and. I have to do all that things. too. Oh yeah. But that's uh, you know again with can I hope my boss isn't listening. Uh, no, with the with the advent of computers, it's a lot easier now. I can get that done a lot faster and devote more time to the cartoons. Right. So are the and, are the are your cartoons all drawn on paper? Do you use computer I, uh, computers? Both. I I I'm old school. I like to like use Bainbridge board with a rapidograph or my uh, fr oh. fine point pen. I'll draw it by line a line drawing. I'll scan that in to Photoshop and then I grayscale it. Right, now, if right. we so, happen to have color on the page I'm working on, I'll colorize it. I don't see it too is, much. No, we. You, sad part is you need an advertisement in color on the opposite page or on that page in order to take advantage of color. Uh -oh. Otherwise, it's several thousand dollars extra to I print see. color. In a, so sometimes in I don't get it. So now I'm going to call him up. Oh, well, I'll text him or something. <laughs> No, I'm looking at his cartoon once or twice, and I, I'm pretty aware Sometimes what's going on. Sometimes the humor's on. out there. And I'm I mean, like, okay, what does this mean? So <laughs> are you a student of the political cartoon uh, the I'm, history of it? And uh, I'm, so I'm more of a, not really, because I, again, I couldn't follow, I couldn't sit through C-SPAN to save my life and try to get material. It's, right, right. I'd just be asleep. I, I do more editorial, like what's current with the town. And as I yeah. said, it could be... Something going on in town hall. It could be right. a, a special event in the town to raise money. It could be something with sports. It could be something to highlight a sale. It, it's just anything to, that's happening in the town. Right, right. Cause Cause how always, do you get that information? I mean, I mean, where are you getting? Because you're not coming to all the meetings that I go to. Well, no, you know, you're it's like generally so. it's easy just to go online. You know, because I have access to all the papers and from read, the previous week, and I can just read the read papers. Them. I also do a lot of the proofreading for the papers before oh, they go out. That's right. it. So I, you know, I pretty much have a handle on all the stories. I can read what's going on previous week, and it's like I can do something with that. Maybe it'll be pertinent for the next week. Otherwise, I. Does that carry a sketch pad? Uh, sometimes I usually just contact the editor and I say what's pertinent for next week. Yeah, you have that's... an idea, and he'll send me a link to his story, right. or he'll send me the hard copy. Right. And it's like this is my big story. Can you do something with that? And I'll read through it, and it'll be like, it sounds like this person is doing this, this, and this. To simplify it, he'll say, that's exactly. Okay, how can I make fun of that? You know, how can I find some humor in this? And you, so it's what you have is an essential component of, uh, of, the, of the whole newspaper. Yeah, business. he is. It's a yeah. good part. It's a lighthearted part. I like to part. think so. <laughs> and the papers are getting smaller and smaller, which is so well, Which makes you bigger and bigger. <laughs> right. Well, we, we just hope that we don't run into the old, like, hey, this could be used for ad space, you know? Oh, <laughs> Well, I was really thrilled that he came and did this, highlighted it this year at the library because that makes it more important. Yeah. More people pay attention now to the fact that I'm waiting to see this ex exhibition because you had to put 20, at least 20 cartoons into that room. Oh, what do we have about? Jackie, 20, how many cartoons? 22, 20, 50? 50, I guess. Oh, yeah, Cause a lot, most, a small. Yeah. Right. Good. I'll enjoy that. So people have to take some time, or they're not going to get it. Yeah. You have to look at them if you're going to. You can't just whiz through like an art show and you know, say, "Oh, animals, okay." You know, or if you like something more, you yeah, stay you long. Have to read them. You have to read them. And if somebody snitches one, I'll actually be flattered. You will be. <laughs> well, well, I hope nobody does. That. I hope they don't, but so it'll be look, good for my ego. We're looking forward to seeing who shows up Saturday for this reception, mm -hmm. and then I'm really looking forward to seeing what younger people come and hear you talk. Oh, and hear how you present be my yourself. Pleasure. Hope they do. When you present yourself, we have to be half serious and half not, because you're like yep. half serious person, but half of you is always looking for the fun in the. Oh well, yeah, situation. I can't. I mean, I can't keep an audience riveted if I'm like somber. I have to like throw humor into it to right. keep them laughing. David, you could do that too. You're you can keep. Good. You can keep an audience riveted. <laughs> I hope. No, I always. I always preface uh, every one of my uh, talks with. Uh, you know, most of my life, people have been ignoring me or telling me to shut up, and now they're paying me to talk. 
Well, that's Which, sounds that's, familiar. That's, <laughs> that's why life is funny. Right, right. <laughs> that sounds real familiar to me. <laughs> I came from a very loquacious family. Everybody was always talking all at once. I, you know, there were four of us, and we were all pretty much talkative. Yeah, well, it's the only way to get it get us head I at never the dinner thought, table at I your mean, house, right? Well, I never thought that it was I anything mean, special. The, the first time I did one of these, I, I, you know, it's like I have the slideshow up there. I have the the mouse button. I'm like going through, and I'm like, I talk about myself and what I do, and it's like first off, bat any questions, and basically there's just crickets chirping in the audience. It's like, oh boy, I better think fast on my feet, you know. But, you get, I'm sure you get some remark. I mean, if you tell me oh, about yeah. kids. Well, I've actually found like an older audience is really more engaging. You know, a lot of older audience come there because they want to be there and they want to learn. So how come you know? haven't done the senior centers? That's a whole. I other. have done a senior center. Oh, you have because that's a whole. Yeah, one audience. was retirement community and one was a senior center in New Canaan. And aside from a few folks who had trouble hearing, right. but they they were very appreciative and very excited that I was there. It was a, it was it was a real nice experience. Yeah, it's nice. He can communicate with so many people in such an easy way, Dave. You know. Otherwise, like otherwise, with children, you got to like scream at them, throttle them, and say, "Pay attention!" But all right, well, I like, well I like it a parents. lot, and um, I saw the first exhibit. I'm looking forward this week to seeing the second. Oh, thank you! And I'll I'll be there to greet everybody uh, Saturday afternoon, unless we have a uh, some crazy weather. I think it's going to get easier the weather right now. I hope so. <laughs> and then um, I wish you a lot of luck with it because a lot of people looking at it. Oh, thank you! Pretty big audience online too. Great. So I'm very pleased to meet you. Thank you, Jackie, for bringing him. You're welcome. Had a little injury here that that yeah, I'm not be... driving too well. So <laughs> well, as long as it heals, you know, soon, and Jackie doesn't have to spend the rest of her life driving you around she... <laughs> and working all day. It's, it's not my drawing arm, so oh, Let it is. Oh, know that. it's not his drawing arm. So <laughs> thank you for having us. Thanks, Doug, for coming in. Doug Smith, the cartoonist. You don't want to be called a political cartoonist then. No, editorial cartoonist. Editorial works. cartoonist for the hands. For the H A N network. Okay. And he also does a little bit of a podcast too. Podcast, yeah, on uh, drawing conclusions, our our uh, podcast show. So he's branching out. Yeah. Come to visit us at the Eastern Library. You won't be disappointed Saturday, this coming Saturday. Bye. Oh,